Makes it a 10-10. Okay. I mean, we're still going to try to fight. That's all we can do. Hit them down to 8. A very unconventional way, but we are trying. Foundry Inspector. Okay. Well, did we get there with this? Okay. The hunter has to block. No matter what, they have to block. Down to one. Wow. Hello, my fiery friends. The Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck, like once again, we're playing another super awesome deck that you all voted on to be made into a deck. And honestly, this deck is hilariously crazy when it does go off. What exactly are we playing today? Well, you got me. Well, I'm glad you asked. So join me today as we jump into the timeless format to play a ton of artifacts and make a bunch of giant constructs to overwhelm your opponent in a deck we are calling Blue Steel. Well, I guess the look I'm best known for is Blue Steel. What's that look like? Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So as you can see, our stats are a little funky today, but don't worry, they may look goofy, but hear me out. This mono blue, mostly colorless artifact deck may have an average mana curve about 3.0, but it actually is a lot cheaper than that. Same thing also with the other parts of it. It has 23 creatures, but that does account for the 41 artifacts total you have in the deck. You have eight instants, and it does look very low, but again, you'll see why in a moment, 15 lands. The deck's main focal point is to then make sure we then resolve one key blue artifact. And with that single artifact, we just then start making a giant army of constructs as we keep casting our more expensive artifacts and this eventually overwhelm our opponent. That's literally all we're trying to do. But how exactly are we going to get there? Good question! Well, I'm glad you asked again. So we're actually, this time around, we're actually going to start with the star of our show. So that card is going to be the one and only Simulacrum Synthesizer. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about this card for just a moment. So Simulacrum Synthesizer is an artifact that's blue for three mana that says when it enters the battlefield, you get to scry two. It also says whenever another artifact with the mana value of three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Basically, that's all we're trying to do. We want this artifact out to then help us then start building up a ton of actual constructs. Before we actually talk about that, let's actually start with the creatures first going into the one drop slot. So actually for free, you have Ornithopter here. It's mostly just going to be a slightly filler, but also a great artifact that you can put some extra items onto, which we'll talk about in just a second here. We also have in the one drop slot Ginger Brute here. It's a one one little haster, just does some early game damage and also can help us stabilize if we sack it to gain this three life. Going into the three drop slot, however, to help start building up some of that construct artifact army we have, we'll also have Foundry Inspector here. Only three copies of it, and as you can see, artifact spells we cast will be one less to cast, making it really cheap for us and much more easier and faster to cast some of our bigger stuff. With that, we also have in the three drop slot, Halo Hopper. This has Convoke. And then finally, in the seven drop slot, although ideally you don't want to cast these for seven mana, is we're going to have Thought Monitor. It enters the battlefield, and it'll then allow us to draw two cards, but it also has affinity for artifacts along with mirror enforcer both of these cards allow us basically to cast them for cheaper as long as we have a bunch of extra artifacts on the battlefield ideally mirror enforcer will be free if we have enough artifacts thought monitor will at least cost one blue mana but one blue mana to draw two cards is a really really sweet deal circling back over to the non-creature spells to help support this whole game plan you'll have cards such as moon snare prototype here you tap an untapped artifact we control to add one colorless mana or in the late game you can also channel this for five to then basically bounce a non-land permanent to the top or bottom of an opponent's library. You'll also have copies of Springleaf Drum here so we can tap an untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color so this all helps us with fixing to make sure we then cheat out stuff a lot quicker. And then finally a single copy here of Shadow Spear. This legendary equipment will basically give one of our creatures plus one plus one trample and lifelink but for its secondary ability we can then also make sure our opponent's indestructible and hexproof creatures lose their ability. Really really sweet option there. Going into the three drop slot, you'll have Metallic Rebuke. This will be our counter spell, and it's also cheaper with the improvisability, meaning that also we can tap artifacts and then make it cheaper to cast. The other option, of course, will be Sink into Stupor here. Really, really awesome card. I actually love it. It can either be a land in a pinch, or then you can utilize this to bounce something away as a sweet tempo play. And then also you'll have in the three drop slot a single copy of Nettle Sis here. It's a living weapon artifact equipment. However, it'll get plus one, plus one for each artifact and our enchantment we control. Really, really powerful and a great way to finish off your opponent between this 
and Shadow Spear. Now granted, I know some of you may not like hearing this, but it has to be essential for the deck and also really expensive in paper, but at least in Arena, it is somewhat budget. It's going to be the One Ring. I obviously don't need to tell you much about this card. It really is an extremely powerful card. We had to have at least a couple copies in this deck just to help us, of course, dig out some stuff and also to stabilize if we just need to get a little extra card draw in the mid to late game. As far as the land package goes, as always, because it's a budget deck, we're just going to have to work with what we got. So we'll have 10 islands, of course. We'll have a buried rune, so we can sacrifice this to then bring back an artifact card from our graveyard to our hand. And finally, four sets of Dark Steel Citadel here. This, again, is just going to help cheapen a lot of our affinity effects on us, or also we can use it for the Convoke and Simulacrum abilities to pump up our constructs. If you're interested in taking this in the best of three, here's going to be your best options for you on a budget. So your counter spells will be two copies of Disruption Protocol here. You'll have a ton of artifacts, so this will be a lot cheaper. And of course, Stubborn Nile here, which is even better for us, because again, you'll have a ton of constructs out. So this will be actually a really sweet and cheap counter spell if you can make it trigger off for its ferocious ability. Vexing Bobble will be another option here for you here, because again, if we're playing this in Timeless, you're going to have a lot of opponents that will then try to throw some free stuff out there. So this will be a great way to counter that as well. It also draws a card in a pinch. A copy of Sorcerer Spyglass here. The actual main version used to actually be a rare, but this is actually sweet now that it's actually budget as an uncommon. It turns off, of course, an activated ability of sources, whatever you do name. Mostly it's going to be Planeswalker hate for you. Your graveyard hate will be Stone of Eric for this deck, and then it is a legendary artifact. And also anything that gets destroyed will actually get exiled, so then this will turn off a lot of enemy triggers. And then you then tap it with two to then exile a graveyard and then draw a card in a pinch. Dampening Spear will be your next option here. This is just best option for combo decks to turn them off and make sure they have to pay a little extra for you. You'll have copies of Patchwork Automation. May look a little strange here, but in case if you do need maybe another powerful artifact creature, this construct also has built-in war too, and it'll actually start pumping itself up as you do cast more artifact spells. And then finally, at the very bottom here, and it does look very expensive, but hear me out, God Pharaoh Statue is a nice way to finish off your opponent here. Since you'll have a ton of artifacts out to then cheapen a lot of these costs, the six mana actually won't be as painful as you may believe it is, and then just taxing your opponent for two is actually hilarious, and then slowly but surely, you'll be able to drain them out for one life as as the game progresses. Woo! Now that we have the whole deck out of the way, the biggest question we need to ask ourselves is, is it possible to actually cheat out some of these bigger artifacts for next to nothing on a budget in the most powerful format in Arena? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Well, there's only one way to find out, so I'm super excited about what this deck is capable of. Let's go ahead, let's take it into Timeless Mal and see how well the deck does. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can our blue steel be the real deal today? Well, we have enough lands to cast what we need, and we do have a nettle sis. It's not going to be quite what we are looking for ideally to play, but it should be still enough with everything considered. So with that, Dark Steel Citadel, Ginger Roots. Swinging. Down to 19. Okay, opponent. Crack your wooded foothills. There we go. What are they playing? Okay, Rackets Theater, so they'll surveil. Okay. What is our opponent playing? Windswept Heat. Okay, they crack that too. Got a planes. Unstable Amium. Okay, so I guess they're an energy deck. Martu energy? That's interesting. Okay. We got the one ring. That'll be helpful for a little bit later on. Let's bring the drum. Go swing the ring down 16. Okay, so if we can get Nettle Cyst out. That should be more than enough for us. Or we can also get the one ring. One or the other. Shadowy Backstreet. Okay, but it's all in on Surveil Lands. But that does help us out a little bit because it does buy us a little bit of time. Cathorian Nightmare. Okay, so for this... So, I forgot, this is a combo piece mostly, but is it gonna hurt us? We'll find out. Okay, Ornithopter. Okay, so with that, Nettle Cyst coming down. Living Weapon activates, so it's a 4 4. Ornithopter coming down. Now it's a 5 5. Okay. Well, again, we still have to wait a little bit longer, but we are at least putting a clock on our opponent now next turn. Up. I think Dirge might be something to worry about in the future, but we'll see. Lively Dirge. They ping us. They're searching for a library for their card. What are they going to throw in the graveyard? Obviously, it's going to have to be something busted, but we'll see. Okay. They put back Johnny. Interesting. Galvanic Discharge. 
so they're gonna spend seven, or actually five. Stinks, but that's okay, everybody. We still have time. Pay some energy, and we'll go from here. So with that, okay, how do we do this here? Hmm, okay. I think we'll just turn this on. Down to 10. We have to keep mana up now for Stink and the Stupor to kind of just throw them off. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Okay. All right, a land, elegant parlor. Another Victoria Nightmare. Okay. Bring us down to 18. They get more energy. They will exile. Okay, so what they get? Galvanic Discharge again. Thorian Nightmare number three. Oh, wow. Okay. Is that enough for our opponent here? Another island. Unfortunate, but that's okay. Down to one for our opponent. Okay. Well, opponent, you got one turn to make this all work. Can you do it? Lively Verge. Okay. So with this, this is where, again, we come into play, everybody. Put it back. Too bad, opponent. Denied. Whew. Okay, well, we got the win there, everybody. Again, not the most exciting way to win, but those new modal lands here are very helpful. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Let's see if blue steel is the real deal. So with that, we have our Darcio Citadel, some islands. We do have ways of cheating things into play, but is that gonna be enough? Well, only one way to find out, of course. So we're gonna try. Opponent's playing Field of Dead already. No! We're in for a jolly good time. Okay, jokes aside. Let's push down our artifacts and we'll see how fast we can do this. Clock's again gonna be against us here. Hydra. Okay, they're playing Birthing Ritual. All right, well, that's a choice. Island. Ginger Brute. There we go, swinging. Got 19 on our opponent. Okay, but the good news is though, we are speeding up the clock here very quickly. Topiary Stomper. All right, they're getting their ramp on too. It's just a matter of who is faster. Forest. Alright, they're gonna start digging for stuff here, which is gonna be really, really unfortunate, but we're gonna see. Can we outdo this really powerful mythic? Alright, they got Solemn Simulacrum. Right, another force for our opponents. Bardothopter. Actually, that's not too shabby either. So, with that, that does speed things up for us. Counter Inspector. Thought Monitor. On Ornithopter. Draw some cards. Mirror Enforcer. All right, well, we are starting to go off a little bit here. So we're now actually at a point now where we definitely can start hitting our opponent pretty good here. Forest. Opponent is very close now to getting those zombies to go off, so we need to go wider and bigger than they can. Druid of the Emerald Grove. Wow, I don't even remember this card. I don't think anybody actually remembers this card. So our opponent digs up more lands. Search of Greatness. No swings from our opponent, but will they sacrifice? I'm guessing they're going to sacrifice Sad Robot. Oh, actually, they sacrificed the Druid. Interesting. At this point, we might have to save this Moonstone and Prototype just to bounce something else out of their hand here. Okay, so what are they going to blow up? We already have enough artifacts where this isn't going to hurt us too badly. Not monitor to go bye-bye. Sick of the stupor. Okay. Hmm. Well... Nettle Cyst. Turned on. How does this work? At the beginning of their end step. Okay, so we need to time this so we need to bounce this away right when they when they can't do anything. We're going to sacrifice the germ just to turn it on for our Ornithopter. So with that. Down to 12. Moon Snare Prototype. And I guess we'll just tap Ginger Brute. I guess I should have probably done this ahead of time, just to get a little extra damage, but... Can our opponent outdo us here? Alright, another forest. Elvish Visionary. A lot of simple little value pieces for our opponent, just to keep sacking for more stuff. Another Solid Simulacra. Alright. Will they pull out another Slime? I think that's probably what they're gonna do, and that's probably gonna suck for us, but it's okay. They do their thing. Sacrifice some robots. Our 
Harborback Stomper. Wow, okay, that's a random card, but okay. They do gain life off of that, which is annoying. Dark Steel Citadel. Okay. Well, I think I have a better idea here. So, nothing here actually can stop us with reach. So, we should be able to swing in here. No problem. Push him down to eight. And we go from there. Okay. Well, we're a turn away from victory if our opponent doesn't do anything else. But I think our best bet right now is we're going to have to then bounce away that birthing ritual in just a bit. Another Solemn Simulacrum. So we're going to have to go full control here for a moment. This is now where we can bounce away the birthing ritual. Okay, this is actually our turn right here. Okay, this is it. This is where the fun begins. There we go, everybody. Bounce away the ritual. Sorry, they don't get a trigger off of that. Druid goes down. They'll roll the dice either way, but that's not enough. 13. But I think that's it, everybody. I think we got him. Desperation swing. No blocks. Let's do the damage. Down to 10. Here we go, everybody. Here we go. Yes. And there we go. Victory, everybody. Wow. I'm not going to lie. That's, again, not what I was expecting for a victory. But as you saw right there. And yes, of course. Yes. Yes, we did have fun. <laughs> yes. But again, looking at the battlefield real quick, I highly underestimate in this deck sinking the stupor. This is actually one of our all-star cards. Wow, tempo play right when we need it. All right, my fire friends, here we go. Is our blue steel the real deal? Well, the good news is, all right, we do have one in hand, but is that going to be enough of what we also have? I think we could still try to make this work. We just need to get to one more key land, and we should be able to pull this off. We will hurt ourselves, which is a little painful, but it's not going to be too bad in the early game. All we just need is one more land, and we should be able to pull off the Marsh Bandits. Ginger Brutes. Actually, that also helps, too. Brutes. Swinging. And a 19. Okay, so all we gotta do now is we gotta put Simulacrum Synthesizer down, and then that's when the party begins. Okay, well, I think this is the turn, everybody. We all came here to do one thing, so... Let's do it. Simulacrum Synthesizer. Alright, and... Okay, well... Put back the ginger brute. We need to start getting all of our cheap stuff out. Alright, Glacial Fortress. Fable. Not what I want to see, but that's fine. So, island down. Alright. Now here's where the fun begins, everybody. And we'll put down Thought Monitor first. Draw two cards off of that. Make the construct. Draw some cards. Okay. Well. Hopefully we should be able to now outrace our opponent here. I'm guessing, though, because they're playing Yorion, they're probably going to try to link a bunch of stuff and do some shenanigans. But even if they have Wrath, we already have the Simulacrum down. That's our key piece. That's, what, of course, what we wanted. All right. They hurt themselves. Leyline Binding. <sighs> opponent. Opponent goes swinging. All right. That's an interesting choice. But why? I think they might actually try to Wrath. So let's we'll just block it. Goblin goes bye-bye. Do you have a Wrath opponent? Enigmatic Incarnation. Okay. I don't like this deck at all. Honestly, I'm just not a fan of cheating anything out. But, I mean, it is what it is. Okay, so unfortunately that does turn off everything. But, we are... We're down, but we're not out. So, with that... Shadow Sphere. We will play Spring Leaf Drum. We will play... Is this actually minus one? Okay. Mirror Enforcer. Mirror Enforcer number two. All right. We will pass from here. Okay. So although they kind of are doing their best they can to shut us down, we're still trying to fight through. It's not impossible. Trial of Ambition. All right. Well, opponent's got every annoying little piece here just to shut us down, but we're going to try. Our deck on the downside also does not have many ways of removal. We're just focused on just building up everything and just going big. Do you swing, opponent? Alright, so they're going to do more shenanigans with their incarnation. Deputy attention. Okay. This is looking worse and worse, everybody. <sighs> Alright. 
Mirror Enforcer again. So. We will then add Shadow Spear to it. Not that it does much, but we'll try. Draw some cards. Second Enigmatic Incarnation. Another tap land shocked. They go swinging at us. Take a treasure. Down to 13. They sack the other one. Interesting. Okay. Kenrith. Okay. Well, I know what's going to be happening soon. Siege Rhino. Okay. Well, I got everything they need now to start doing their blink shenanigans. But we're still going to try to at least fight a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Okay, so we got our Nettle Cyst. We can equip it, I think. Tap the germ. It dies. Makes it a 10-10. Okay. I mean, we're still going to try to fight. That's all we can do. Hit them down to 8. A very unconventional way, but we are trying. Our equipment actually is helping us quite a bit here, so that is nice. But if our opponent has any removal right this, at this point, we are going to be sunk. Triumph, they're cycling. Okay. Wow, they cycled on their main face. They must not have an answer. Up the beanstalk. All right, opponent is trying to find an answer, I guess. And they go swinging. Okay. We're up to 20, so we do have time. But that incarnatic incarnation here is such a pain in the butt of a card. All right. Shock themselves a six. Wow. Okay. Fires of invention. Okay. They sack it. Okay, that's a desperation one. But I mean, that means what can be coming out? Yorion. Okay, well, here comes the blink shenanigans. Foundry inspector. Okay, well, did we get there with this? Okay. Donna has to block. No matter what, they have to block. Down to one. Wow. We are not done yet, everybody. Siege Rhino. Life gain and drain. Okay, opponent. You have to find an answer now. Up the beanstalk. Okay. Their card draw. They're digging for answers. Glacial Fortress. As I figured. Enrith is going to try to do deputy attention, so <sighs> this means our mirror enforcers go bye-bye again. Right. Unfortunately, that does hurt us quite a bit. Okay, clock's ticking, opponent, and they only have one mana open. They swing. It's pretty much free damage for them at this point. If we can't do anything about it. We'll just have to take the hit. So we go down to nine. Enigmatic Incarnation. Sacrificing a Beanstalk. I think I know what's going to happen right here. If they hit, of course, with the Trial, if I'm guessing, that's pretty much game, everybody. We can't get bounce back from that. Skyclave. <sighs> All right. I think that's pretty much it for us, everybody. Well, this stinks. So we lose our last artifact creature. What are we drawing to? A land? That doesn't do it. All right. Back down. And that's game, everybody. Man. This deck is just so frustrating to deal with. I really, I'm just honestly not a fan of free spell cheating stuff. I know we're, that's kind of what we're trying to do to a degree, but I think we're doing it the fair way. All right. It is what it is. We'll get them next time. And there you have it, ready. So that was our blue steel deck for you for Timeless. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? To be perfectly honest with you, I'm actually really happy with how the deck turned out. But as you kind of saw, the deck can either be super, super fun but if we stumble even just a little bit, then the deck just kind of struggles quite a bit. You saw in one of our matches there, we were able to get out the synthesizer, but our opponent had enough key pieces to kind of just shut down our whole game plan. On the other hand, we actually don't need it all the time to get wins. You saw from our other matches, some of our other key pieces here are surprisingly a lot more powerful and throw our opponent off when they least expect it. So I'm actually still overall satisfied with the deck. Having said that, this deck definitely gets a lot of power if you manage to upgrade it. Speaking of upgrades, if you manage to stay this long into the video, as always, thank you so much. You are my true fiery friends. And because of that, you'll definitely get to see right now how we can upgrade this deck and make it even more powerful than it currently is. 
Now, if you're looking to upgrade the deck a little bit more, here's what I'm going to recommend for you. First off, we're going to get rid of our cheaper artifacts, so our Halo Hopper and our Foundry Inspector are going to have to get cut. This will actually make room for our new, bigger, and more improved powerful cards, Phyrexian Metamorph. It basically enters the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield. So, this will just help us either get extra copies of the One Ring or Simulacrum Synthesizer, basically whatever you need just to help get your game plan off. And with those other cards out of the way, we'll also squeeze in two copies of Kappa Cannoneer here now that this is available in Timeless. This is actually a really awesome little card here it protects itself with ward four it has the improvisability and then if we put a plus one plus one counter on the kappa cannoneer it cannot be blocked so it's a great finisher for the deck one thing i did forget to mention of course is this is actually one of the few decks where you actually don't have to upgrade your mana base as immediately as other decks out there so you can keep it as is in the basic form but if you do want to do a couple of light upgrades all you just need to simply do is add in a copy of archway of innovation this will help you of course make your spells have improvised which is great for our deck and of course a single copy of otawara soaring city mostly for the bounce effect but again it doesn't hurt to have just an extra copy in there in a pinch. As far as the sideboard is concerned, you also don't need to upgrade too many things here, but again, the many things I would recommend for you is we're going to add in copies of Defense Grid here. Mostly this is, again, just to hose out certain types of decks out there and kind of punish them along with cards like Dampening Sphere. We'll add in a copy of Reckoner Bankbuster here just for a little card draw, and also, again, the vehicle can be helpful in a pinch when we need to. Stasis Coffin here is going to be more of like our Panic Button Emergency card if we need to just protect ourselves for a turn. And then finally, another card here. This is mostly for psychological kind of gameplay, which is Palantir of Orthanc. In short, the card basically just allows us just to mess with our opponent by milling some cards, scrying just to kind of fix what we need to draw into. But if our opponent chooses wrong, we may be able to drain them out with punishing them with this artifact. Either way, however you look at it, there's tons of options for you. So kind of make a mix and match to see what works best. And with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. Overall, this is definitely going to be a deck that can run super hot or super cold. And what I mean by that is, as you saw, if we can just pull off sequencing all of our artifacts, then just start cheating stuff out there, then it gets hilariously out of control. And most of the time, your opponent just can't respond. However, as you also saw, if we just kind of stumble even a little bit, that low mana curve that we have and also our creatures are going to struggle to even get a couple of artifacts out there. Having said that, if you're still a fan of artifacts, if you are a fan of cheating stuff into play for super cheap, and if you're a fan of making a ton of creatures that can not only go super wide, but also super big at the same time to overwhelm your opponent, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to make a giant construct army out of nowhere, where it sometimes looks like your opponent has the edge, and they just no longer can then stop what you are building, you will definitely have a lot of fun with this deck. You'll be very surprised that Hala can pull that off, and I assure you, you, you will not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!